Hi everybody, Jennifer Ferguson here with Artistic Painting Studio. And I'm finally uh, finding a few moments this afternoon to do some work on the um, Hutch project. So I thought I would just go live and let you guys see what I'm working on here. Um, what I have here on the floor next to me are um, the three drawers that go into the front of the hutch. And I decided that I was just gonna go ahead and get out one of my stamping rollers and go ahead and just uh, stamp the side of these and show you guys just how easy it really is. Now, I didn't do anything to the sides um, of the drawers. They fit so tight, I'm actually gonna have to sand a little bit so that they go in and out a lot easier. So I decided I didn't wanna paint them. I'm just gonna leave them in the natural wood and um, just go ahead and stamp these, okay? So I'm trying to make sure I got a good view here for you guys and you can see what I'm doing. Actually, I think I'm gonna switch sides. If I can get past everything here. Okay, it's a little tight. <laughs> and um, go ahead and do these for you guys. Okay, so just as quickly as I can, all I'm doing is just rolling along the side of the drawer, okay? And hopefully you guys can see this pretty well. All of them are a little bit different size, so they're all going to get a little bit different part of the pattern. And here's the smallest one here. I mean, and look how quick and easy that is, okay? With just a few minutes of my time, I don't even know if that was a few minutes, okay? It definitely took me more time to get the roller out and load the roller than it did to um, roll the sides of those drawers. But I thought even on the natural wood, um, that would be a really cute little added bonus when the drawers are opened. Okay, so give me a second here. I'm gonna wheel back over to the rest of this project that I'm working on. And this is why I have the camera so low. So I wanted you guys to be able to see what I'm doing here. Um, so the fronts of the drawers are done in my hammered metal effect um, using the ostrich roller and kind of creating that hammered metal. So I was going to show you guys how I actually um, do this, okay? Um, I'm using Texture Medium, which is my um, own product under the Artsyville line. Okay, I'll fuck it up in here. And um, I've taped everything off just so that I don't have to worry about getting that Texture Medium on anything else and just going to go ahead and trowel this on. Now, if you guys have been following me on this project, um, and I hope you guys can see this well, I love these little Japanese trowels because that point gets right up into that area so I can get that product everywhere I need it, okay? Um, but the other day, I think it was actually Saturday I was over here, and I got the hutch completely or I got the, at least the base of it um, completely primed and ready for the fun stuff, okay? Um, priming, prepping, sanding, none of those are fun words, but um, to me, um, they're extremely necessary uh, that you make sure you've got a great substrate to actually work on. And, you know, when you're working in something that's recessed like this, Gonna take you a little longer than if you have just a nice flat surface to work on okay um, and again with doing the rollers um, it doesn't need to be thick so I'm trying to keep uh, the product on here pretty thin um, and if you guys have any questions um, as I get going uh, please feel free to ask oh gosh I hope I'm not too blurry here um, sorry about that if we are uh, we're trying and working hard on our internet connection back here, but it seems like we just haven't had the best luck lately, and I'm not sure why. Um, we used to have such great Wi-Fi in this room, and now it's kind of been a little touch and go. So I'm just using the side of the trowel and trying to make sure I've got the product everywhere. Um, like I said, I love how it comes to a point because it's so easy to get the product into the corners for you. And then I'm just going to try to smooth out 
maybe some of my marks or areas that are a little bit thicker. Um, and there's no way that you're going to not have areas that are going to be thicker and thinner. And that's just part of the whole, um, you know, laying down the product. There's no way. I don't care how talented you are, how many years you've been traveling. Um, I'll never get this on here at the same level of thickness. There's just no way. So once I have everything on there, um, and I really do hope you guys can see this really well. We're not too blurry. Now, this is the ostrich roller, um, which just has all these different shapes, um, little bumps all over it. And just make sure that it's spinning good before you get ready to use it. And I am just going to line it up with the edge and see if I can get it up there a little bit more. And if I can't, I can't, okay? And I'm double rolling it because I want it to get kind of messy, okay? So this is a section up here that's just not getting um, the roller because it's just has that lip and will not allow me to get up there. So, you know, what can you do? Um, I could actually cut one of these off of here and um, use it as a stamp and stamp up there if I want it to, or give me just a second, let's see if I can find a brush handle here. Okay, I'm just gonna use the end of one of my art brushes and I'm just going to go ahead and draw in a couple of those circles, okay? Because all they are is abstract circles. So it's not gonna be that big of a deal if there's much here or not that much. Um, and I'm telling you, this is just kind of messy, just trying to mimic a little bit of that pattern up there. And these are some of the tricks that you just have to do when you can't get the roller to go into all the little spaces. And there's times where, you know, I might have just said, oh, okay, who, who cares? And not even tried to um, add any more detail up there, which is not a big deal. Um, the other thing I love to do when I am doing the, um, the hammered metals, because I rolled through here more than once, um, let's see if I can bring you guys in maybe a little bit closer. Hope you can see that really well. But it does peak the material, so instead of having to do a lot of sanding, I'm going to take my trowel and I'm going to smooth out some of that texture um, just so that I don't have to sand as much. And it basically just kind of lays down the pattern a little bit. And I'm just being as light-handed as I can because if I press too hard, I could make some of the pattern disappear, which, you know, not always is a bad a bad thing. Um, sometimes it's kind of nice that it kind of goes in and out. But, um, oh, we're blurry again. Okay, maybe I'm just getting too close. Maybe that's why it's getting blurry. Um, so at this point, uh, the texture medium is going to have to completely dry. And then from there, um, I will paint it and go forward with the, uh, the rest of the layers. But this is one of the really coolest hammered metal looks you guys can get. Um, if you want to stick with me, I'm going to roll over and do the other side. Sometimes watching things a couple of times I think is a great idea. Um, if you get bored, I understand. <laughs> and let's see, okay. Let's see if I can actually even get over here. Okay. This is a little bit tighter area. So let's see if the camera, the me, and all the product can actually make it over there. Bear with me. We're moving. And let's see if I can move this up just a little bit. That'll help. Okay. Let's get back down here. Uh, okay. You guys can get, we can get over here. Okay. Now I have a few extra dirty things. Okay. Let's get something to put the roller on. And, you know, if you guys do have any questions, um, please feel free to ask. I'll try to turn around and look, and if I missed it, um, I'll definitely make sure I answer your guys' questions once I'm done playing around here. Um, so far, the next step after this um, is I picked a couple of the um, 
DIY paint colors that I absolutely love, which is the old 57 and some mermaid tail. And I know that I'm gonna be using um, that on the top and some of the trim area uh, of this piece. And um, I know that when I get to the actual hutch part, the top, I'm gonna do a little bit more with the uh, rust and patina finishes too. So we'll see how much I can actually get done. I was hoping to have this part done so I could get it out of my classroom uh, this week because um, it makes it a little bit tighter back here when um, I'm trying to uh, teach a class this week. <laughs> so we'll see if I can uh, get this done enough to pull it into my office um, by Thursday evening. We'll see. It's only Tuesday, so there is hope. Let's see. Somebody had a question. Yes, it is doable if you are a beginner. Um, I'm just, you know, working this material and it's no big deal. I'm not rushing uh, with my texture medium. You have some time to work with it. It's not going to dry on you too fast. Um, I'm using a trowel because I really think it is one of the easiest tools. Um, but over in the drywall section, um, I was at Home Depot yesterday. Um, I think I go to Home Depot more than I ever even go to Macy's, okay? Uh, let's see, there's a question here. Is that actual paint or a mixture of paint and plaster? It's actually a plaster product, okay? Um, so this is not a paint. This is my product called Texture Medium. So it is a, a full-bodied um, plaster. Um, and it's a product that I designed to use with the rollers. So um, I was looking for something to create that I felt would uh, trowel onto a surface relatively easy for all different um, uh, degrees of, you know, from beginner to intermediate to advanced, you know, finishers that everybody would actually enjoy working with this product. Um, but I really did have beginners in mind because I wanted something that was easy to trowel on and work with. Um, and some of the materials out there on the market are just slick or just not as user friendly. So I find that this product does work really well. Um, and oh, like I was saying, when I was at Home Depot yesterday, gosh, I can lose track of direction way too quick there. Um, they have these plastic um, like spatulas and they had a little bit of flexibility to them. So I thought maybe that could actually be um, another tool that would be viable to, um, to work with with this if you didn't want to actually um, purchase a trowel because the trowels do get a little expensive. Even that tiny little trowel runs like $40, okay? So again, I'm just rolling through here. I'm rolling a couple times. Um, I'm being messy. And um, let me go get my little paintbrush again. Sorry, guys. I'm just running around the camera here, going in and out, okay? And I don't know if you guys can see what I'm doing here really well, but literally, I am just um, drawing like little circle figures, okay, with the end of the brush and nothing, um, not, I'm not worried about the shapes, I'm not worried about how many I'm doing, I'm just trying to mimic a little bit of um, the ostrich roller pattern so it doesn't look like there's just nothing up here. And there's times where, you know, it's okay um, that you don't have to, to, you know, worry about this all the time. I did see one of my customers that had uh, logged onto this video. I don't know if he's still there, um, but I know that Herb has done a tremendous amount of my rollers, and um, when he's done the crocodile in panels like this, he just didn't worry about going to the edge. Like even down here, I'm missing about maybe about a half an inch or so, and you know you just don't always have to worry about that. Okay, I'm cleaning off uh, the edge of my trowel so it doesn't have a lot of product on there right now. And again, I'm gonna pull down and smooth some of this out. Um, again, I like the way that it looks. I think it has more of a hammered metal look when you smooth it out a little bit. And then again, it's gonna save me sanding time tomorrow. 
because I hate to sand and I really, really, really hate sanding in my studio. So um, it's much better if I don't have to go back and sand this. Hi, Herb, you are still there. Thanks for joining me. Yeah, you're sticking with me today. Um, but like I said, when Herb's doing this and he's whatever pattern, if he has some area that is um, not achievable to get to there because of you know a lip like this or being a, a recessed panel, um, he's just not worrying about it. And depending on how far away, because um, he's done a, a, some ceiling panels uh, with the crocodile for sure that I know, we should post it on my site again um, to share with you guys. But they're far enough away that nobody's ever gonna notice if the, um, if the texture that you, or the pattern that you rolled is not all the way to the edge. So um, I just don't worry too much about that. But um, I'm glad you guys were able to join me and um, so I could show you a little bit of the progress and actually in action on a piece and just a set of a sample board. So thank you guys for hanging in there and joining me. Um, again, I'll read through the questions and answer them when I get everything uh, cleaned up because I've got some cleanup to do now. You guys have a wonderful evening and we'll talk to you soon. Thanks.